There, how's everybody? My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Ahuna Tour YouTube channel, and it is a Shabbat. Yay, it's a Shabbat. Can we get a drum roll for the Shabbat? Yay, all right. It is a Shabbat. It's a day we have been waiting for for the last six days, and we finally made it to a Shabbat, and we thank you guys very, very much for joining this Shabbat service, and I guess None of this stuff. We are just some people out in the middle of a jungle that are reading the good book and doing the things that we used that people did on this Shabbat years and years and years ago, which is where they would go to a temple and the people who could read the Torah would sit there and listen to it. And if you guys remember back in the days of Ezra, when Ezra was actually reading, remember when he first everybody came out of captivity and he started reading the Torah to everybody and they started weeping, they started crying and they started just praising Yah and it just became this huge thing. And it is such a blessing that we are able to have the laws, statutes and commands at our, our fingertips. And we want to start off and we want to do just what they always did. And this time we want to just spend just a, a brief moment on all of these because these are... These are not just commandments. These are not just some uh, sh uh, a ball and chain that we are pegged to the ground and we can't move anyway. We have the freedom to do whatever it is we want to do and we can either choose the right way or we can choose the wrong way. And there's, there's no middle ground to it. There's no half in, half out. You're not half in the pool and half out of the pool. It is all the way in. You're either dedicated to Yah and his son Yahusha or you're on the other side by default. And that doesn't make mean you're a bad person if you're on the other side. It just means that you're not one of our creator's chosen people. And how do we know when our creator has a chosen? What is the mark of our creator? Those who wear zizits. Where's the zizits? What else? Ooh, follows the Torah. What else? Keeps the Shabbat. Keeps the Shabbat. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what it said over and over and over is that it is those who are keeping Shabbat. Caden, take us into the Torah of Yah, the most amazing thing ever, and let us let us go over the first. What is it about? Be fruitful. Let's do it. Be fruitful. It means to basically spread the earth, be like basically replenish the earth, to be fruitful in your works, to 
uh, bear fruit to bring forth children. Um, yeah, be fruitful, right? I mean, that is right out of the gate. If, if we only had one command and no other commands, right? Being the, the lazy guys that are sitting on the couch and never ever get off the couch and sit there and watch TV all the time, that is not being fruitful, right? None of, none of that is being fruitful. Being fruitful means expanding your world and expanding the kingdom. The only way your world is going to be expanded is by expanding the kingdom because hopefully your world is the kingdom. All right, next, Dave. Multiply. We are told to multiply because there's more people, there is a more people follow Yahuwah. It's what we're supposed to, we're supposed to bring forth families, we're supposed to be multiplying the earth, not just leave us as people and abort the babies, but we're supposed to multiply. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Who's next? Repl it's right. Replenish the earth. Okay. What, what does that mean? And how is this a blessing? Um, there's just more people, more things all over the earth. What does a replenish the earth mean, guys? All it's like when you take something from the earth, you, you replenish it with something else, right? You cut so, a tree so down. We, so we so we chop down the entire Sherwood forest and leave it, mm. or do we replant the trees? We replant it all. Re retake care of Yaw's stuff because his his nature is amazing. All right, Kate, subdue it. I'll go to the next one. Subdue it. Have dominion over all. A uh, fowl in every living creature. Yeah. Can you imagine if this was not a command, right? We would have the bears taking over us, right? We would be afflicted by the animals. We have to have dominion over the animals or they will consume us. They will eat us up. They are too strong for basic humans. Okay. The herb bearing and every tree is for food. So you are supposed to eat the fruit of the trees and... God has provided everything on the earth for us to eat. Does that include the swine? No, that's not a tree or herb. Yeah, it's not a tree or herb, but it says it says every tree is for food. Does that mean poison ivy? Can we eat poison ivy? Uh, I don't think so. Actually, I think you can. I think it's actually it is a actually really healthy thing if you eat it. Um, you're not supposed to touch it, but there are things. I think that is. Remember the book of medicines by Noah that 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 uh, mm -hmm. Yah gave to Noah, and because he was the facing sickness and disease. All right, next. Uh, man and woman should build their own families. Um, that's what they should do. They should be building families and bring forth children. They should... Exactly. If you're trying to build a family and, you know, you're getting stuck on petty things that you want your, you know, that you will destroy a... Um, a family over, right? You can, there's a lot of reasons that people get divorced and a lot of bad reasons they get divorced, right? And there's, there's, there's setups for divorces, but there's also, you're supposed to work on this. Messiah Yahushua talks about, you know, have being faithful and doing all this. All right, next. Master sin. Don't, Master, don't let sin control you. You have dominion over sin. Do not let, do not sin. Uh, just stop sinning. Yeah, you, don't be a slave. Don't be a slave to sin. Um, it's easy. I, I will tell you in the world of pornography, in the world of the internet, it is easy to lose yourself. Uh, most people have been lost inside of the internet, inside the dirtiness and filthiness and, and the evil that is inside of that. And you are a slave. You are a slave to what you can't control. That goes for food. That goes for drugs. That goes for alcohol. That goes for absolutely everything. And you do not want to be a slave to anything except what? Yahuwah. Yeah, Yahuwah. It's his ways or no ways, right? All right, next. Jade. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Okay. All right. So there again, we have the, the food laws. Okay. So it says, that lives shall be food for you. And that does not mean they consider pig to be food. That was not a considered food because they knew it was unclean. Yeah, it was not. It was not. That's why they had um, seven by seven of all the animals that went into the ark and not one by one because they would have come out and they would have slaughtered everything clean and, and that wouldn't have been. But they, they knew about sacrifice. Imagine Noah disobeyed the commandment and said he's going to have a bacon sandwich from the morning. There'd be no pigs. There'd, There'd be, be no pigs. Yeah. And that those are very important creatures. Even though they're abominable to us, we shouldn't be eating them. They are the uh, the death keeper, right? These things will go by and eat absolutely everything and they, they can handle it, right? They can handle disease and bacteria and things that humans can't and I mean yeah you're frying it up and still sticking it but you're, it's an abomination to our creator when you put that stuff across your lips you're, you're slapping him in the face all right what do we got next blood verses in that Jade I mean man and not do and if we and we, that is life is in the blood. Messiah Yahushua gave his life for us, and that is the blood by which we are saved. 
And if you're sitting there drinking the, the, the contents of life, when our creator has said not to, then you're, you're, as, you're like the Satanist. And that, that is the same for rare steaks. If you guys are eating rare steaks and you don't want them cooked all the way, there's still blood in the meat. You're eating the blood. So have that stuff well cooked. All right, next. Ten, walk before me and be perfect. How, is, how can somebody walk? You can't keep the laws, Eli. You're the right now, and we're you know, and that's that's what I hear all the time. Oh, you're a heretic because you uh, you won't you Yahoo. And this is early on in the scriptures when we started reading. Stop. The things that are good. We're not dealing with unholiness. We're not dealing with anything other than that. We're dealing with very good laws, statutes, and commands that will make us cling, that will... Oh, okay. Commandments. We walk, do you walk before me? You've heard God. Yeah. 12. Let's go. Commandments. That is eight days old. Okay, and I've seen there circumcision, right? They tremendous amount, and it's is weird because North America they do circumcise their children, but I don't know what day it is on. It's definitely not a biblical thing in North America. Um, I guess we got lucky being in North America, but a lot of people are like, "Oh, that's just a that's a, a violent thing that you have to do." Why is circumcision important? Yeah, who commanded us to do it? Yeah, exactly. That's it. He commanded us to do it. It is the mark of the peculiar people. Yet again, we're marked in a different way. All right. And guard. One of my favorite ones that I hope when I rest in peace that you guys will continue on. And not only will you take what we have learned and what we have discussed, but you will take this and expand it and you will shout it from the mountaintop. So you will deliver it to every ear that is willing to hear, every heart that is willing to take this. And you guys will continue to do that. And if we had not done this command to teach you guys these commands, then when I'm gone, then you guys would just go off into whatever worldly stuff you guys are into. And that's not what this is about. It's a kingdom road. And this kingdom road has to be taught to our kids. For His name. Next. Over. There we go. Lots of stuff. We also remembrance of the time Yahusha died for our sins. It correlates with both days. Which is a very significant thing because Yah always has his days and he always puts things together for a reason. And Yahushua was our Passover lamb that basically washed us over our sin and saved us from the second death, which he did with the Israelites. He saved them from the angel of death. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Again, one of Yah's special feasts. Oh, that's the old laws. We shouldn't be there doing these things. But it says right here, there's one Torah for the stranger. What, what does that mean to be a stranger when these people are around? It means they were not biologically part of the sons of Israel, but they still wanted to be Israel, so they kept the same commands of the Israelites to be part of Israel. And if you're a stranger and you want to become a part of Yashrael, how do you do it? You follow you keep, the commands. You, the commands. you yeah. just you open your Bible and you start doing what it says in the Bible. Yeah, you start keeping the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator. And there's one Torah for all. Yes, this was a. What is this? It's kind what? of a thing where the Levites could, like, you had to redeem your firstborn for. Built. And um, he with cat. All right. There are no before you. Absolutely. There are no mighty ones before you. That Yacht. means no bowing down. Don't worship anything more than Yahuwah. Yahuwah should be the number one priority. And Wait, what about a Christmas tree? Don't we all get on our knees at Christmas and, and, and bow to the giant tree? We go over that for a very long time, but many things of that is satanic, and we shouldn't be doing that because it's not a commanded holiday from Yahuwah. 
Yeah, what about getting on our knees in a church, a, a man-made church? What about going up there? They have an altar call every time, and we get down on our hands and knees in front mm-hmm. of a pulpit, and we, we it's, uh, you know, you say it's to that, but it's, you know, you say it's to what you call your God, but it's not to Yah, because it's Yah... Sick. It's probably worshiping other things. Yeah, you should never ever, that. yeah, it's, a, it's, our creator is not in a hand of, is not in a temple made by man's hands, by any means. Not very- Yes, and how do we bring Yahuwah's name to not? Well, there's the Lord's name in vain, which everyone knows, or calling him God in general, or bring his name to not. You would basically take his name and just call him a title. You or would. make a joke out of it, right? You people make jokes out of the son's name, son of uh, the Yah's name all the time. It's a mess. 21. is a with us today. I'm Shabbat out A good thing. They know more. They know best. They've been through it, and honoring them would be to obey them, to respect them, just as Yah wants the same honor. What if your himself. parents aren't right? What if they're commanding you to do stuff that is incorrect? Um, well, you probably still should obey them, and Yah will have to deal with them. What if it's an evil command? I feel like there's a thing like if it's like if it goes like in store, if it's something that's going to send you to hell, I would. I don't know. That's a good question. Isn't I, it? That's I don't hardcore. know. How would you do that? How would you like you you want to obey the commands, but they're also making you unobey the commands? Here, here's here's the thing. We have to keep Yah in all perspective, right? Everything has to be based upon Yah. At a certain level, you guys would become old enough to understand that if your parents were on the wrong track and they were sending you to do evil things, that you would want to avoid that. The case in point is Abraham, right? Abraham figured it out real early. Um, he prayed when he was just a child that um, he, he would follow in not the same paths as everybody around him. He, he figured that out really quickly. So yeah, all right, next. Do not. All right, yep. Because you are self into a problem because you're you're wasting your time wishing for stuff that you did not have and it will lead you to sin because if what you need is what Yah will provide. If you don't have it, more than likely you or as, as much as we, we can figure out. And what are these what are these spices? What so are these anointing? So these are some like special perfumes and uh, oils that the priests were supposed to make to anoint themselves. Let's pay- Obey. Uh-oh. Scroll. Scroll in. Quickly. Eat. Breath. Eat pig. No. no. Do we eat ravens? No. no. Do we eat ostriches? No. no. Do we eat chicken? Yes. yes. Do we eat um, iguana? No. no. Do we eat hippo? No. no. Don't eat the hippo. Do we eat dogs? No. no. Cats? No. Uh, horses? No. no. Shrimp? No. Uh, lobster? No. Whales? No. Oh, no. Sharks? I think some of them you can. Some of them have fins and some of them have, have uh, scales. scales. All right. Okay. 54. 54. Women's time of separation. All right. And that here, just woman's time of separation. You're not to be touching her. Okay. Okay, 55. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene. Yes. There's a lot in the. These are how you do the lot is good. All right, and 56? Keep the Day of Atonement, or what is called Yom Kippurim. Yep. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Boo. Take your wife, sister. Yeah, and especially in like the states and stuff like that, you'll end up in jail. That's illegal. Um, <laughs> so, probably a good thing. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably it's one prob- of the good laws they have. I don't think so. It's because that goes against Yah's laws. Because there is no law, there's no commandment that says you should not have more than one wife. Oh, I thought it was if you take a sister. That was the well, thing. no, if you take another wife. Oh, okay. you can't take another wife. It's not a sister thing. So no. All right, next. Do not uh, do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. Yes. Stay- Is 
is not on the kids. Yeah. Still here. I do not lie, man and man, women women. It is a it abomination is, to y'all. Yeah, it is an abomination. Same with the filthy freak. Are you? Oh. As well. Fry your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, mingle in is what it's supposed to mean. Okay, 70. Cool. Don't practice sorcery. Now... The, the the I guess the people that have taken over the world is is what it looks like to me. Um, this looks like those people that are are pushing stuff like that. Should we be take? What happens if you have in, uh, diabetes type A and you have to have insulin to stay alive? What ha what happens then? What's the rules? It's type one, not type. type one. Oh, it's type one. Type Sorry. one and two. Yeah, type one, type two. I, a and B guys. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so is this a? What do we do? Uh, I don't know. We don't have the book of medicines anymore that's available to us. These people have all the wicked uh, things mixed up, and they hand them out to people on a daily basis. Yeah, and it's it's actually our diets that have have caused all this stuff, right? If we did not eat five hundred pounds of sugar a year, then we probably wouldn't have diabetes. And so. Um, the question remains, should we be taking big... What happens if you need heart meds? So I think you need to research and find the natural way versus going the big pharma way. Yeah, I was looking at some... My, I'm trying everything, desperately trying to get my blood pressure down. And this week, I almost was like, well, you know, let's go take a look at some of these blood pressure meds that I have from over the years. And we went and looked at it. And uh, some of the side effects are uh, skin rashes. Uh, you will urinate blood. You will end up with nausea, diarrhea, all sorts. Just it, the list went on and on and on. And then it even said you could die. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I think I'll just stick with my high blood pressure. And I'll let Yaz will be done. So I don't have an answer. Do we have an answer for this? I don't have an answer. Are we practicing sorcery by taking the medicines of the sorcerers? Uh, uh, probably, I would say, yeah, but there's something probably to that. You should probably definitely rely on Yahoo in natural ways. It might be. Transfusion. If you're going to die, you don't have no blood. Do you do a blood transfusion? I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean, no, no? About blood. Nobody's, nobody's weighing in on this? I would absolutely never, ever do a blood transfusion. Never, ever, ever. It says don't drink the blood. Why would we inject the blood into our stream? But what if the family member that needs the blood? I, it, uh, dude, if it, if I if I lose so much blood and I turn white and pass over dead, put me back and buy the old oak tree, right? Don't put blood inside of me. It doesn't matter if it's a family member's blood. It says don't touch the blood. Don't drink the blood. If we're injecting it into us, I don't even know what to say about that. So I would say probably just call it a day if you need blood. I don't know. Okay, do not round the beard or the corners of your head. Yes! Don't be a beta male. All right. Um, yeah. Beard of men are cool. Yeah. Beard of men rock. Uh, have you hugged your beard of man lately? All right. 82. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not cross respect your medium. He's a, he's a, he's kind of a source. He's mean, a sorcerer's. Uh, he's not, like the he's not, really, ma he's yeah. not really making the, the medicines, but he's selling he's them. He's distributing them. I mean, he's and doing, you don't, he's you doing don't, something he's being paid to do. He probably doesn't know much more than that. But. You don't get sorcery drugs without going to the pharmacist first. So no, we, we don't, we don't kill people like that. But I mean, it's, it's in the, in the land. I mean, you wouldn't be practicing this kind of. Fruits. Feast of Trump is Jam Terua. Yep. Also, the Feast of Sukkot. You do evil. I tooth for tooth. Do we do that in this kind of world anymore? Uh, no, we can't right now, but 
I mean, you can kill a person and end up at, and be free in five years. I mean, you could literally the the system that is out there right now. You can there's just nothing. What year. What year is it? Fiftieth year. Fiftieth year. Yep. Don't go. Um, that one to you garments. How about your garments? Yep. All right. So what's that about, guys? What is the seat seat? Uh, the seat is these little tassels, little strings that you would wear on your four corners of yourself, and it would be a sign that you are set apart, that you are a Yisraelite, so that people would know that you are peculiar. You're a different person than, speaking this. than what the world is. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, sorry about the noise on our ceiling. There's nothing we can do. It's a tin roof and the sun comes out. It's just, it makes this, the our house talk. And if we break up too much, they need to let us know. Yeah. And if, if we break up, let us know in the comments so we don't go too far into this. So we're trying everything we have. We have a real bad internet. We're out in the middle of a jungle. So we're doing the very best we possibly can. Because we're always been talking about a carcass of an animal, now we actually have a commandment about touching a dead body. A human body. A and human dead and body. And when it goes to humans, you're unclean for seven days, where if you just touch an animal carcass, you're only clean for one day, and you basically bath and you're clean in the morning. Right, and so this is a very interesting one, because this one involved a red heifer, which none of us would ever have a red heifer. None of us are Levitical priests. None of us would be able to do the third day bathing on this stuff. So the best that we would have is the blood of Messiah Yahushua that we are going to have to plead and um, be cling from our uncleanness. All right. So with that, guys, let us break into today's scriptures. How's everybody out there? How's the chat room? Is anyone in there? We have quite a few people in here. All right. Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing out there? Much love to everybody. Um, you guys are definitely our family. We live and breathe and... Um, wake up to you guys and um, we appreciate everybody out there everybody who comments and who is part of this little ecclesia and you know the the part of the 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 bible is very you know the the christians believe that everybody has a church right that this church is going to be raptured and so everybody goes um re, you know they all go into uh rapture mode they all go into church mode and if you watch any kind of preaching on tv Everybody is saved. Everybody's going to be raptured. And, you know, it's, it's nobody does the most important stuff of all. And I guess the most important stuff of all would be calling upon the name of Yahusha. So I guess that would be the very most important thing. But beyond that, it goes into a lifestyle change. It goes into a kind of a, um, you, you have to alter your life. You have to undo and stop doing the evil that we are participating in and that we are in. And we are set apart. Right? That is what it means to be a peculiar people, is to not look like the rest of the world. And, and something that is preached is that if you believe in Jesus the Christ, your life's going to be blessed, you'll be rich, you'll have all these great things, your best life now, that's a lot a lot of preachers preach, and that is not true. You're not going to have your best life. Your best life should be looking for the kingdom. You should be seeking the kingdom, and then everything will be added unto you, but that doesn't mean you're not going to go through a rough patch of life. You're not going to go through trials. That means you're going to be set apart. The people of Israel did not get the land easy. Yeah, and we're going to be tested. We're going to be tested even to death, and everyone needs to have the courage and the boldness that they will never, ever drop their knee to the power of Hasatan, right? We bowed to one king, our, our Adonai, Messiah, uh, our Messiah, we will bow to him. We will bow to our creator, Yah. And there is no better power and there is no greater cleanness or greatness or righteousness or better person to um, to to bow to, right? It is He is worthy of all of our praise. He is worthy of all our glory. And I forgot to pray, but let's, let's pray real quick before we get into this. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ecclesia that you have allowed us to present for you. Father, we ask that all of your words, all of your Torah, all of your laws, your statutes, everything that you have is written upon our hearts, minds, and souls that we are unable to sin against you. Father, I ask that everyone that is listening to this are blessed, that you will work with every single one of us, that the Ruha HaKadosh will in, in power our lives, that they will empower our existence, that you will walk with every single one of us. Father, you are a righteous, righteous Father. You are a creator that is just ingenious in every way, shape, and form. Father, you have delivered a Messiah for us, Messiah Yahushua, and it is by his blood that we are healed. Father, we could not do this alone. We do not want to do it alone. We ask that your presence is in our lives, that is within us, within our table, that is with our little family and our Klesia here, Father. Thank you so much for the Shabbat. 
Thank you so much for getting us to another point, Father. Again, I ask for blessings upon everybody that is listening to this and to these families. I ask for protection, that your spiritual guidance will work with us, walk with us, and live with us. Father, we ask this all in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right. Here we go, guys. Lester Number Day Alwitz. Lester Day Alwitz. Hey, Addie. Lester. Addie and her family are here. Oh, Addie. Hey, it's the Creels. Hey, we love you guys. The much, grand. The grand grandma out there. Lester, much love to you, brother. We're always praying for you, brother. I know you're struggling out there. And so we know you guys are all struggling out there. Grand, I hope you guys, you had a, a good week. I hope you uh, made it through. You're not too sore. And I hope you're feeding those, those old people and blessing their lives as well. And there's somebody that spoke to us in Hebrew, but unfortunately, I don't read Hebrew. We don't speak Hebrew. Um, we should, but... So I have no idea what he asked or what his name is or anything like that, but he sent like four or five messages, but I don't Whoever you respond. are out there, much love to you guys. Uh, much love to everybody out there. Yeah, so hi to everybody in the chat room. All right, let us get going. Numbers 20. This is a um, kind of an intense chapter, so here we go. Then came the children of Yashrael, even the whole assembly, into the desert of Zin. In this first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. All right, so we just, right out of the gate, very first verse, we just lost the, the sister of Moshe and Aaron, right? And so, you know, we know Miriam as, um, she, was a, she was a support structure for these guys, mm -hmm. right? She Wasn't also, she considered a prophetess? Yeah, she also it was a prophet because she prophesied a whole bunch of things before. Yeah. I think it talks about it in Jubilees and Jasher. It talks about how she made a whole bunch of prophecies and things of that sort. Yeah, but she was still, she's a, still a child of the Most High. And even though she grumbled against Moshe, right, we all have our days, right? We all will wake up on the wrong side of the bed and we will all say the wrong things and do the wrong things and probably have unclean spirits abide with us all day for being there. All right, verse two. And there was no water for the assembly. And they gathered themselves together against Moshe and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moshe and spoke, saying, would to Elohim that we had died when our brethren died before Yahuwah? And why have ye brought and is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates? Neither is there any water to drink. All right, go ahead. So they don't lose a sister. They also have to deal with these grumbling. They're already probably in like sadness. And the Jews won't stop grumbling about water. Well, here's the thing. These people just got, they screwed themselves up, right? They, they, they messed up. And they're now wandering in the desert because of the last actions they had, but yet they're still grumbling more. Yeah, they're angry at him, like, you didn't bring us to the land like you promised. Like, he almost did, though. He's like, we, you guys were in, literally in the land. You guys were literally, we'd send people there. They brought back all this fruit and everything, and then you guys said, you started weeping and saying you want to die because you don't want to go up and fight the giants. Yeah, yeah, they got, they get getting scared. And these people are very faithless. They, uh, they've been delivered so many times. So many things have happened to them. They've been, they were delivered from the ocean, right? They arrived right. a giant sea. And, in dry land. And they uh, still um, are weeping and like complaining that they're, they're going to die in the wilderness. They don't think I was going to save them again. Well, yeah, and that's that's the thing. is They, they think it's so much better in Mitzrayim. And, you know, that is a crazy viewpoint. If you Just, been no, it, well, it, it wasn't a, probably a better place. Weren't but, they all crying up to y'all? And y'all was like, I hear your cries. I'm sending my, my servant Moses to come save you. I mean, like, they were losing their children. They were getting beat. They yeah, were they were losing sword. their firstborn. And they were, like, so sad that they were getting beat. But the moment they get taken out and, like, a single moment, a wind blows against them. They're like, oh, we're just going to go back to Egypt. It was better there. Yeah, you have Pharaoh grabbing the babies out of the, Mitzri or out of the Israelites' houses and tossing them in the river. And yet they want, they're like, oh, it's so much better in, in Egypt, right? Well, These people are crazy. They them for bricks. Remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. Jasher. In Jasher, in the book of Jasher, they actually put the babies in the actual tower build. Um, if the people were not performing, they took the babies um, and they stuck them in there and they heard the babies crying inside of the actual mortar. There's something definitely mentally wrong in their heads where they're like, oh, we should go back to Egypt. It's better than this. Yeah. Where, like, at least they're not getting slave driven. They're not getting beat down. They're missing water and that's all they're complaining about they could literally just ask God to deliver water kindly and he would deliver them water so, so here's the question because we are not there should, are we wrong to be judging these people if we were there would this be different probably uh, at least for a little tiny tribe yeah little tiny tribe we'd maybe I hope I hope we would be I think it's a good example of what if we, when we have to go back if this happens to us don't do this. We'll be we'll be wandering around land forever. Yeah, can you imagine us? You know, we're extracted from wherever we're at, and, and we we believe that there is a second exodus. We believe that when everything is pretty much darkness all around us, and the enemy has has encroached upon all of us, and there's nothing. It looks like there's there's nothing going to be left. 
that out of that, we will have messengers and we will be pulled to safety. That's what I truly believe. Does that mean that we are not going to face adversity and problems and trials and tribulations? No. In fact, being people of Yah, the revelations is very clear that the people of, of Yah are hunted by Hasatan. He hates them. Um, in, in fact, he hates anybody that's keeping his, his law, statutes, and commands. So if you guys are a Torah-keeping people, then you guys are marked. You're marked by Satan as being an enemy, and you're marked by Yah as being his friend. All right. Six. And Moshe and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of Yahuwah appeared unto them. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, On your brother, and speak ye unto the rock, unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock, so you shall give the assembly and their beast drink. Okay, so this rod, I think, is the rod that Aaron used. He said, take the rod. I think this is the one that they hung up on the wall. Yeah. Does your, does your, does your version say his, the rock is it no. he? No. no, I just take him out of the rock. It give forth his water. So I was wondering if y'all had, like, men rocks. Because <laughs> we know the moon is a female. Right. And the sun is a male. And what else is female? Uh, wisdom. Wisdom is a female. Right. All right. Nine. And Moshe took the rod from before Yahuwah as he commanded him. And Moshe and Aaron gathered the together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? <laughs> so Moses is in the best mood. This is probably not the He's having doing an this. awful day. He's having a terrible His day. sister just died. Now these crazy people just won't shut up. And he's like, Do you want me to fetch water out of this rock? And Moshe lifted up his hand. And with his rod, he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the assembly drank, and their beasts also. All right, so what did we have just happen here? Uh, right. Yeah, who had told Moses and Aaron, he says, you're going to go talk, you're going to sit down, you're going to talk to this rock, and just to show these people that, you, that, you, that I'm going to provide for them by you speaking to a rock. And Moses, I mean, he's obviously having a fed up day. He's obviously, he obviously cares for Miriam. It's his own sister. He's not going to have a great time that she's dead, so he's done with these people. So he hits the rock with the staff, and the, basically the rock throws out the water. Now, if this rod was Aaron's rod, would it still have blooms and buds on it? Or did that rod... I don't think this would be the rod. I think it's the other rod that he had at the very beginning. Yeah, I don't think the this is the... one that he used to split the I, Red Sea. Maybe. Well, it says, it says isn't Aaron's rod? Didn't it say Aaron's? Well, she took, took the, the rod. rod. Okay. Okay. I don't think... I think that one... Um, that one was, was there for uh, forever. All right, so here we go. And Yahuwah spoke unto Aaron, Because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Yashrael, therefore ye shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. All right, what happened there? So basically Moshe got kicked out of the land. And? And a small Aaron. thing. And they're yeah. saying, you guys are not getting into the land. You're going to wander around with them for 40 years as well. I'm not going to let you in because you just refused to prove the people before my, their eyes. You refused to show them my power. You just went and hit the rock out of your anger. Yeah, and so I guess that Yah wanted him to speak into a rock, not hit the rock, right? So this was, this was not supposed to be about violence. This was not supposed to be about aggression. This was supposed to be basically he just speaks into it and the water comes out. So he, he cursed, Yah cursed Moshe and Aaron, both of them were unable because of this, right? So this was the hand of Moshe that did this, but the heart of Aaron was probably as, as the same as Moshe's because they both got banned here. All right, 13. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Yashrael strove with Yahuwah, and he was sanctified in them. And Moshe sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Yashrael, you know all the travail that has befallen us. All right, so it goes from the rock and it goes into a whole nother situation. Now they're going in and they're trying to travel through Edom, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so they're going up there and they just ask the king of Edom, hey, can we, tra can we travel here? And for those that don't know, Edom is also part of their family, even though it's distance, it's still Esau and Jacob. That's there, so Edom is their own family. That's why he says, hey, brothers. Hey, everybody's family. We're all family. Everybody sitting at this table and everybody of you guys out there, we are like literally all one big tribe. We're the tribe of Yah. 
And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, a side note. I think when the day comes when we are actually pulled over to the promised land, where we're, where we're going to be pulled over to, I think Yah will actually say, hey, you're from the tribe of Levi, you're from the tribe of Benjamin, you're from the tribe of Reuben, you're from the tribe of Gad, whatever it is. I think that's the only way that we would ever know. But it's, it's clear there's 10 tribes that are still lost out there, right? So we do. I think there's all twelve tribes still lost. Well, there's honestly. well, uh, yeah, they're not the two the, the the today's Israelites are not today's Israelites, right? That's not God's people. You just look up abortion clinics in Israel, and you will see these people are not the people of Yah. All right, fifteen. How our fathers went down into Mitzrayim, and we have dwelt in Mitzrayim a long time, and the Mitzrayim vexed us and our fathers, and when Mitzrayim, and behold, we are in Kadesh. A city in the uttermost part, uttermost of your border, of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the left, to the right hand, or to the left until we have passed your borders. Okay, so that's want this happened with two million people going to the land. Uh, there's always been hatred through both families that where he hates them, where there's always been like, they've hated each other since the beginning of days. Yeah, and if you guys have ever seen um, what cows do to a land, if you have a herd of cows, they will completely destroy the land. There, there will be nothing left of your grass by the time the cows are done. Even walking across it, and even two million people walking across. But he did say they would use the highway, which would probably, it's probably some dirt road or something that was along the way. And so, what does he say? And Edom said unto him, You shall not pass by me, lest I come out against you with the sword. And the ch children of Yashrael said unto him, We will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of your water, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, You shall not go through. With a strong hand. All right, so not only did he... Um, he basically he he armed up right. These guys armed up, and then they 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 Yashrael passage through his border. Wherefore Yashrael turned away from him, and unto given unto the children of Yash of Maria. Take out and put. All right, so we had a sister die, and I don't know how long it was. It could be it could have been like been months, but now we have. Aaron, so we have Moses' other, Moshe's brother. He's about to keel over there. 27. And Moshe did as Yahuwah commanded. And they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of the assembly. So something that uh, noted here is that it was Moses that was uh, struck the rock, but Aaron obviously had something to do with him striking the rock. It wasn't just Moses getting angry by himself. It obviously because he's getting punished for it now as well. He's like, where, where Yahuwah tells him, your brother's going to die, it's time for you to like... Tell him Elzar's now in charge. Yeah, and that's why that's why I mentioned there had to be something like his heart was with Moshe when his contentment, like he they're was like they're, talking they're about they're how they like break the rock or something. I don't think they, I don't think he went up there intentionally, but he saw all the people grumbling, and it's easy. It's easy to lose your patience. It is super easy, especially when there's a dead family member. Or you're in a time of trial, and you get all these angry people trying to like stone you again. Yeah, maybe Moshe's blood pressure was high. Maybe this took him over the edge. Always blood pressure is definitely high. Deal with the yes. <laughs> all right. 28, and Moshe stripped Aaron of his garments and put them up on Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moshe and Eleazar came down from the mount. And when all the assembly saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned, mourned for Aaron 30 days, even all the house of Yashrael. The grandson says it seems as if this was a major trade road. Could it have been known as one of the king's highways? Well, yeah, I think it was. I mean, the King's Highway. I mean, yeah, it, w it was. It was something that would not have disrupted this guy because this guy gets cursed pretty much for every. every everyone hates the Edomites. Um, I think they eventually get annihilated. Yeah. So, no, yeah, I mean, it was the King's Highway. It was something that they should have been able to go across, and it was probably to make their journey far shorter because now they got to go the long way around. Um, but Yah has these guys marching out in a desert anyway. So, I mean, Yah knows all of this. And if, if the hand of Yah wanted them to kill the king of Edom right here, they would have just wiped him out, right? They had the power, but Yah was still in lesson mode, teaching all of the old people to have a little bit more faith as you die off along the way. All right. I guess that is the end of this. 
Um, anything going on in the chat? Um, no, we did have Sylvia. I don't know if she's still in here or not, but she was here for a second. And then there was also Yehoshua, me, I don't know, it's in French. Okay. And that is, again, is our roof talking. I am so sorry about that. I, I don't know any other way to do this because our house is like this. And so there's, this is just what we get. It's a talking roof. And okay. Jay Kevin, he's also there. Shabbat shalom to all these people. Yeah, Shabbat shalom to everybody out there. Thank you guys so much. I guess with this, we will wrap up and we will thank you guys very, very, very much for hanging out with us. Um, we really appreciate it. And um, yeah, may, may Yah's blessings shine upon you guys today. May your Shabbat be a beautiful Shabbat. I hope you guys are rested up. Hope you guys are resting. And um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys very, very much. Anyone have anything else? Um, if this is your first video, this is your first time here, I suggest you guys go back and we start at the beginning of the video series we are doing to get the full info on all the command things. And if not, read the beginning of Genesis 1 for your guys yourselves and read it for yourselves. Yeah, and did you put the link in the chat, Yahoo and the Torah? I did at the very top. At the very beginning of this chat is our, the website, yahooandthetorah.net. And it's essentially, all it is is the same commandments that we read today. It is on the website, and we will keep updating them as we continue working our way through numbers and end up in Deuteronomy, and then that will end this segment. And we've had a tremendous amount of fun with it. We've met a tremendous amount of family doing this, and we love you guys very, very much. All right, guys. Shalom. All right. Get some rest. Yeah, shalom. Bye, shalom. everybody. Much love right. to you. Shalom. shalom. All right, goodbye.